And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. And lo, he come forth to the water and say unto him, Thus said the Lord, Let my people go. Amen. The Lord had a reading and blessing to her and do of the word. Father God, we thank you once again. Lord, I pray right now that you anoint me with a fresh. Lord, I pray you give me preaching power. For Lord, only you can speak. For I rebuke the devil right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray right now that you use me in a mighty way. That I may speak to your people. So that when they leave, they may have a word. Lord, I thank you now. It's in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Boys might be a little ashamed. Sometimes the change of weather mess with you. And old devil will try to trip you out. But I want to use that as a subject today is beware of God's finger. Beware of God's Finger. You know, sometimes we, as church, we think church is bored sometimes. I've talked to some people and I've heard some people and they said, you know church sure was bored today. <laughs> but I don't think it was the church that was bored. It was the service that's in the church. Really? You see, you ought to come here with a praise on. Uh -huh. You ought to come here expecting a blessing. Uh -huh. If you come here with nothing, you're going to leave with nothing. Uh -huh. Because nothing from nothing leaves nothing. And one and one is two. So if you come in here and, and enter into your way to the church with a praise, you're going to get something. 
And two, if you send your praises up, your blessings are going to come down. Because let me tell you, no matter how, what you say in your life or how you do it, what you do in your life, God is still going to be glorified. Oh, somebody ought to help me right there. I don't care what you do, but God's still going to be glorified. And I just say we have some pharaohs in the place. You know some pharaohs in every place. And you got to be careful about old Pharaoh the same way that old, old Pharaoh tried to put it on Moses. The same way he took it to God, you need to take it to God. You don't have to let old Pharaoh treat you any kind of way. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you something about the field of God. You see, your hands is physical hands. Your fingers are physical fingers. Your hands, your finger don't mean nothing. Somebody help me. I can remember when I was back in school. I think I was about seven or three. And I can remember old partner of mine, his name was Kenny I We always somehow he pick at me every day. I told you, you got some facts. And one day we were walking up the lunch hour. And he said something to me that I didn't like, so I stuck my finger up there. Come on, somebody. You know what finger that is. And a lot of you have stuck your finger at somebody. You just don't want to say that. But I'm going to help you today. And when I stuck my finger up, you know that old finger, the principal saw it. And when he saw that, he told me, he said, come here, boy. He said, didn't I see you stick your finger? That, that, that. I said, no, sir, I, I, I was just really waving. He said, no, I saw that. He said, I want you in the office. And uh, when I came in his office, and I don't know if a lot of y'all might remember Brother Zeno Jr. Uh -huh. was a principal at one time in the child. And Zeno had a little old black scrap about that long. And he told me to hold out that finger. And when I hold out that finger, he wrapped me on that finger. And I thought it was just one time, but he said, hold it back out. He hit me again on that same finger. And he must have hit me about six times on that thing. And for a while, I thought I lost that thing. I went back to school the next day. People say something. I never stuck that thing out again. I might say something, but that finger wasn't going up. You never know who catch you. And that's the same way God will punish you. And God has a power. He has a holy thing. Not only do we have a holy finger, but he have a I am that I am finger. He have a Yahweh finger. He have an almighty finger. God has a finger that you don't want to mess with. You see, when old Pharaoh was messing with Moses, God told him when they tried to take, take over, and you know, somehow or another, we try to uh, duplicate people. And everything that they try to do to most of these people, that everything that God used against, they try to do it again. God went to Moses, and I mean Moses I went to God, God went to Moses, he said, let my people go. Go tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. But every time old Pharaoh goes, every time Moses goes to Pharaoh, and tell him to let my people go. God use another plague. Mm -hmm. And you know God will use some plagues. When you mistreat people. And misuse people. God will send something out you. Mm -hmm. God sent pestilence. After old Pharaoh. Old Pharaoh hard headed. He sent frogs. Yeah. He sent lice. He sent bugs. He even uh, sucked blood on the doorpost. 
And all of a sudden, Moses still wouldn't let my people go. Moses went to God ten times, actually, to tell him that about old Pharaoh. He went to Pharaoh ten times to tell him to let my people go. But every plague that God put on him, old Pharaoh would try to test him. He tried to match it. But there was one thing that he couldn't match, Pastor. Mm -hmm. He couldn't match the dust. No. Because the dust was made out of man. Somebody out here. Right. He, 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 he matched it all, but he was confused now. He said, we done tried everything. There must be another God somewhere. He, 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 because when he turned dust into man, you see that, that, that God take care of his people. You see, I told you my old finger was just a disobedient finger. Uh -huh. But God's finger is a powerful finger. When God writes something or when he plays something or when he give out something, you better take heed. That's why you better treat your neighbor, right? You better help your neighbor some kind of way. You ought not do them any kind of way. And you ought not become a pharaoh because if you're a pharaoh, all you got to do is somebody, he do somebody tell you, just tell him to take his hands off. Mm -hmm. If he don't take his hands off, you go to God. Mm -hmm. You can't do this by yourself. Right. I tried that by myself. It, that, that don't work out. But oh, when you go to God, yeah. God will and can deliver. Yeah. God sees everything. He knows everything. It's the same way old Pharaoh was, would never let his people go and the same way he wouldn't try to use against the Egyptians and put all those old plagues. He tried to use the same plagues God used. But they, when the dust became man, he couldn't have a man. The musicians, when they found they couldn't duplicate God, they cried out in fear. Tried all he could, tried. Finally, Pharaoh got the message. He said, maybe God is trying to tell me something. Somebody help me. God is trying to tell you something when you don't do the right thing. How many times in our lives we try to duplicate something? We try to copy it on something. How many of you know it just don't work out? You better look at your name and say it just won't work out. We got to do the right thing. Because God means what he say when he said, let my people go. And that's what he told Pharaoh. God fingerprints. Let me let you know something. The heaven declares the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hand. Day after day, they pull forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. Somebody help God communicates through his creator. He clears the way for all mankind. He says, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn them to darkness. I will turn the darkness into the light. Mm -hmm. It's one thing about God. God knows what he's doing. And not only do God has to put his finger on you, God will say when, he, when his son is son now. Somebody help me. Mm -hmm. You know back in the day when they when when they were trying to throw stones on a woman, they were trying to stone her to death. Mm -hmm. They said that she was a whore. Mm -hmm. But you know when Jesus came along, they kept on, kept on questioning why Jesus don't do something about this. But guess what Jesus did? Jesus just kept on writing on the ground. He just kept on writing. Mm -hmm. The more he write, the more they say something. The more they want to stone her, they say, why, why, why is Jesus just study down there writing? You know Jesus don't have to answer me or you. You know that, don't you? Mm -hmm. Jesus don't owe you no explanation. He just kept on writing in the ground and writing in the ground. The more they look, and Jesus just kept on writing with his finger. Then I tell you, the finger is powerful. And the more he write, the more they want to say something. 
So finally they kept on, they asked Jesus that, uh, the last question. They said, are you going to do anything about this woman? Jesus looked up and he took the stone and he had it in his hand. And he said, let, let not one amongst you cast the first stone. How many of you know you can't throw stones at folk because you got some stones in your life? You better be careful when you throw your stone because all of us, one time or another, is something in our lives that ain't supposed to be. That's why you got to know that the finger is powerful. That's why he let God know that, that, that that's why God let Moses know, he said, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. But when you're hard-headed like Pharaoh, God will take care of you. You don't have to try to take care of yourself. All you got to do is pray. Because God is our deliverer. Still, if you looking down, you ought to be looking up. When somebody do you something, you don't have to look down. You don't have to feel down. You just keep on being happy. Turn over to a man that can supply all your needs. I tried to fix things myself. It just didn't work out. I tried it one way. I tried it another way. But when it don't work out, you can't do nothing but turn over to the one who can fix it. I had to learn as I was growing up to accept Christ. You know, we was all wild at one time. And I know if anybody was a pharaoh, it was me. When I was growing up, I was a pharaoh. Yeah, I played in school. I had the teachers mad at everything. But as I was growing up, I, I, mama took us to church. Don't get me wrong, we was in church. But still, there was a pharaoh in me. I picked it for cheated some for And do you know to come back and haunt you? The more those people came back for their stuff, the more I lied. Somebody must have put God on me because God made me pay. I'm just so glad he didn't take my life. He saw things my way, nobody but a God. Because things kept on happening and happening and I said, what Lord, what is wrong? But when I realized, it was me. I had to change my way. And that's just like some of us today. We got to change our way. Because when we treat for any kind of way and do any kind of thing, God is studying using his finger. God is studying printing out his blueprint. God is studying telling that someone to just keep on doing what you're doing. I'll take care. Because God, what a mighty God we say. What an awesome God we say. Mm -hmm. Somebody say God is good. good. He sent lice on fat. That didn't do him no good. He sent fleas on fat. Pharaoh's still hard hit. <laughs> he sent beetles on fat. Mm -hmm. And you know the beetles, they'll suck blood out of you. You know they bite so hard that they'll kill fleas, but They'll suck the blood. Not only will they suck the blood, they'll enter into your house. Each play, they was entered into old Pharaoh's house. God, I thank God, something about 10 plagues. How many plagues do it take for God to stop you? How many plagues you willing to go through before you change your way? I don't know about you, but I can't stand another plan to come my way. What I need now to come my way is God and the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me and direct on my path. God will direct your path the same way he direct others. He ain't got just one path to direct. God will direct any path. God will open up your eyes and let you see a new day. Darkness can't lead darkness. Only light can lead darkness. And I've been trying to tell my wife that for a long time because she keep me in the dark. <laughs> She'll cut the lights out of that house. And I'll tell her we got to have some light. 
but she just loved that dog. And every time I try to walk to the room, I either hit my knee, stomp my toe. I'm tired, but I keep on. I told her, you know, you cut these lights out, the more I guess I'm gonna just have to call on God. Cause every time I stomp my toe, hit a knee, I the Lord do something with this woman. And she'll tell me I just ain't walking right. How can you walk right when you can't see right? I help me here. Well, when we moved in that trailer, we just bought. I told her, I don't care what comes in that trailer. That desk ain't coming. She got a little short desk. Now you might think I got those sharp edges on I told her that desk, I don't care what you do with that desk, it is not going to follow me. Because that's the desk that keep putting it on me. We finally got rid of that desk. That's when I knew that the Lord had touched my wife. But I told her she waited to have all my knees done got all bent up, my, toe, my toes curled up before she decided to do something. But some things you just got to turn over to, to the Lord. You don't have to argue with nobody. Tell old Pharaoh to let your people come. Tell old Pharaoh to take his hands off. When people treat you bad, talk ways to you, just call them, get away from them, Pharaoh. Get thee behind me, Satan. You know Satan will try you. Just as he tried everybody today. Satan won't take his hands off. He'll try different things, but we know God that can I do Satan. But if you don't call on him, you won't get nothing. Because God is waiting on your car. Getting on the cell phone ain't going to happen. Texting somebody ain't going to happen. You got to get on the main line and let God put his finger to work. And the reason you got to let him put his finger to work because why he went on a hill called Calvary. He, he, he went to the cross and took the blood on his shoulder. He took our blood. He hung there on the cross. They took him to his grave. He stayed there three days. Three long nights. But the third day God got up. And not only did he get up, he got up and proclaimed all power in his hand. And not only did he claim all power, he said, now that I'm here, I've come and received it to myself. Mm -hmm. God will in it. Jesus is able. You just got to call on him. They both the same. Somebody said, God and Jesus ain't the same. I've been arguing with folks for a lifetime that they still the same. And I'll let you know how they still the same. You take an egg. Everybody know what an egg is, don't you? Okay, the egg got a shell on it, right? Mm -hmm. It's also got a yolk in the middle, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's got the other little white part around the yolk, right? But still, you got what? One egg, right? That's the same way God and Jesus is. Jesus is the Son of God. The Holy Spirit, it, 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 it works together. All three is one. Okay, you try to break it. You can't break them three right there. The same way you crack that egg open, you get three parts. Same way you call on Jesus, you get two more happy. Oh, I wish I had some The thing of God. Church, we got to help one. It take a long time to break all this down about Moses. So I just think I'd give you just a little piece of what God will do. Because if you don't treat people right, God will send some plagues on you. But all you got to do is just tell them, let my people go. Pray for one another. Help one another. Love one another. Time is too short. I just had a friend in a car wreck the other day. He got killed. Brother Kevin McGuire. I don't know if some of you know him. He's 50, what was it, 52, 54, 53. Yeah, he was on his way from work, I believe, or going to work. And he hit a tree. The tree had fell all 
way across the river. And he hit that tree. And he killed him. We won't pray back. But anyway, the devil will come up against you with all sorts of things. And people are losing their lives every day. People are getting mad every day. People are talking about those every day. Don't be a foul. Don't harden your heart. Let your heart be soft. Tell God all about your trouble. And God will answer. The church doors is open. There may be someone in it. You may stand in the need of prayer. You may know someone. Or call on someone. And you just want to come in for baptism. You may want to come as a candidate. Or you may want to come by Christian experience. God is there. He has his hands ripped. And he's ready to put his fingers.